Azubillahiminashaitan rajim bismillahir rahman rahim assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, we are going to continue with the next lecture regarding the uh, bioenergetics uh, linked with the respiration topic now if someone asks from you that uh, pyruvic acids produced how many ATP so pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound right this pyruvic acid first enter into the link reaction then from link reaction that has been passed through the Krebs cycle right and during link reactions one energy is to is produced which produce three ATP and in Krebs cycle, three NADH2 are produced. Three NADH2 is equivalent to nine ATP. And one FADH2 is produced, which is equivalent to two ATP. And as well as substrate level, one ATP is also generated. So how many ATP is produced? 15 ATP. 15 ATP that has been produced from one pyruvic acid. We have calculated through this mechanism. And this 15 ATP, 14 are oxidative and one is substrate level. If someone asks from you that uh, acetyl group, acetyl group is a two carbon compound, they produced how many ATP? So it is acetyl groups directly we will calculate the ATP in a Krebs cycle. So in a Krebs cycle, we have discussed that uh, from in one Krebs cycle, 3 NADH2 is produced, which is equivalent to 9 ATP. One FADH2 is produced, which is equivalent to 2 ATP. And as well as uh, substrate level, one ATP is also generated. So total 12 ATP is produced. In this 12 ATP, 11 are oxidative and one is substrate level. If someone asks from you that uh, there is a 20 carbon compound, or there's maybe 18 carbon compound or 16 carbon compound, let's, you should take that uh, 20 carbon compound. Now, 20 carbon compound produced how many ATP? So, 20 carbon compound, that's an even carbon compound, that's maybe converted into 10 acetyl group. Each acetyl consists of two carbon. We have discussed here that one acetyl group produced 12 ATP. So, 10 acetyl will produce so multiplied it by 12. So, that is 120 ATP. And this 120 ATP, 110, these are oxidative, while 10 ATP are substrate level. And there is another question as well, of a different types. If they ask from you people that there is an, uh, 16 carbon compound produced how many ATP through beta oxidations? So there is an, uh, 16 carbon compound produced how many ATP through beta oxidations? Now they have specified the question. So 16 carbon compound. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. That is a 16 carbon compound. So here we have converted the even number of compound directly into the acetyl. But keep in your minds, when they have mentioned the beta uh, oxidations, so by breaking this bond here, 1 NADH2 and 1 FADH2 is also produced along with the acetyl. 
again when this bond is break down it will also produce one NADH2 and one FADH2 when this bond is break down so it will generate one NADH2 and one FADH2 if this bond is break down it will produce one NADH2 and one FADH2 when this bond is break down same case one NADH2 and one FADH2 This bond is break down, it will produce one NADH2 and uh, one FADH2. And this bond is break down, it will produce one NADH2 and uh, one FADH2. Now, how many acetyl groups are forms? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, total 8 acetyl groups are produced. 8 acetyls. We have discussed that one acetyl produced 12 ATP. So, 8 acetyl produced 96 ATP. Now, along with the, how many NADH2 are produced with this process? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 NADH2 and 7 FADH2 is also produced during this process. That's equivalent to 21 ATP and that's equivalent to 14 ATP. So, how much? 25. So, 25 ATP is also included. One twenty ones. So, 121 ATP that has been produced from 16 carbon compound through the beta oxidation. But, keep in your mind, 2 ATP that has been consumed to start this process. So, 119 ATP is a net ATP productions. Now, that is 16. If they mention that is 18 carbon compound. So, 18 carbon compound produced how many ATP? They will generate 9 acetyl group, which is equivalent to 108 ATP along with here, now 8 NADH2 is produced. So, 8 NADH2 can generate 24 ATP and 8 FADH2 is also produced during this process. 16 ATP. So, how much 148 ATP is produced? So, that's why, sorry, we have a problem here. 4 plus 1, 5, 2 plus 1, 3. So, that is 35 ATP. That is 35. And uh, 35 plus 96. So, how much? That's 131. That is 131s. So, how much uh, ATP has been lifted? 129 ATP has been lifted. 129 ATP has been lifted through beta oxidation. While in a case of 18 carbon compounds, uh, we have 148 minus 2 ATP. So, we have lifted 146 ATP has been lifted. That's actually the mechanism through which we can calculate the ATP production in a direct or uh, indirect or uh, oxidative uh, phosphorylation or substrate phosphorylation or through the beta oxidations. So, uh, so many questions uh, they may be asked. Now, we are going to discuss about the photorespirations. What is photorespirations? Photorespiration is actually the process. Photorespiration is a process uh, in which actually there is a molecule we have discussed that's RUBP5 carbon compound. In the presence of carbon dioxide, the enzyme Robisco, which act as a carboxylase and is converted into six carbon compound. It's converted into six carbon compound. 
then uh, six carbon compound is converted to three carbon compound six molecules are formed which is called as pga so pga the first stable compound means then after dark cycle has been started in such type of plant in which the first stable compound is a pga we call them c3 plant c3 plant so in c3 plant photosynthesis take place when the concentration of carbon dioxide is greater but during harsh condition during summer the plant close their stomata why they have close their stomata because uh, they should not uh, lose the water so when they close their stomata they have prevented the loss of water but there is a problem now the oxygen which is produced within the leaf they there is an unable to release them to outside while the carbon dioxide which is need, which is they required for photosynthesis that will not be enter into the leaf so now when oxygen concentration is greater the same robesco enzyme the robesco enzyme now act as a oxygenase and they will start photorespirations they will start photorespiration what is photorespiration in this process in photorespiration the rubp the rubp which is a five carbon compound combined with a oxygen molecule and change into glycolate glycolate then it change into glycine then glycine is converted into serine and carbon dioxide so this rubp and oxygen which change into glycolate this process occur in chloroplast after that glycolate is converted into glycine this step take place in peroxisome then glycine is converted into serine and carbon dioxide this process occur in mitochondria so that's why these three cell organelles are involved during this process one is called chloroplast another is called peroxisome another is called mitochondria so this food respiration that is a photosynthesis hampering process they reduce the productivity of the plant and uh, this food respiration only occur in c3 plant c3 plant are uh, those plant in which first stable compound is a pga phosphoglyceric acid because here the robesco enzyme is sensitive to both oxygen and carbon dioxide now we are going to discuss the next topic that is about the c4 plant c4 plant are those plant in which first stable compound is a oxalic acid and their example is maize and sugar cane and that was first studied by vrit krins that's why we call them krins anatomy that's why we call them krins anatomy so in this c4 plant there is no food respiration there is an asylum xylem actually that is involved in transportation of a uh, xylem is involved in transportation of water and their arms there is a phloem is present phloem is involved in distribution of food and there is a lot of cells are present surrounding this vascular bundle that's called as bundle sheet cell that's called as a bundle sheet cell and along with them the mesophyll cell is present now here in a mesophyll cell they have a molecule we call them pep phosphenol pyruvate phosphenol pyruvates combine with carbon dioxide in the presence of enzyme pepco and it will form oxaloacetate so oxaloacetate is a four carbon compound which is produced oxaloacetate is then converted into aspartate aspartate is then converted into malate 
Melate is then shifted into bundle seed cells. Here it's converted into carbon dioxide and PIP. Phosphenol pyruvates come back to pick another carbon dioxide molecules. Carbon dioxide molecules combine with RUBP in the presence of enzyme Robisco in bundle seed cells. So it's mean dark cycle start here. So see, C4 plants are those plants in which first stable compound is a oxalicetate, which consists of four carbon compound. That's why it's called C4 plant. Second, in C4 plant, uh, dark cycle occur in the bundle seed cell. In C4 plant, robust coenzyme is present in bundle seed cell. In C4 plant, PIP coenzyme is present in mesophyll cell. In C4 plant, PIP coenzyme is only sensitive to carbon dioxide. In C4 plant, PIP coenzyme is insensitive to oxygen molecule. In C4 plant, there is no photorespiration occur. So that's why these plants, they have protected their cell from the uh, photorespirations. So we are going to wind up the today lecture. Wish you best of luck. See you next time. Allah Hafiz.